Hi, I'm Alex L. and I write books for a living. The Hey Girl podcast was created with sisterhood and storytelling in mind. Hey girl. Hey girl. Hey girl. Hey girl. (laughs) I'll be sitting down with some phenomenal women to discuss love. I believe we grew distant out of love of some type. Like, I don't want to hurt you. Loss. Really don't know what's going to trigger that feeling of grief in any moment. And a topic very important to my work self-care. Freedom is self-care. It's not about pedicures. It's not about clothing. It's not about trips. Join us as we journey through sharing together. Hi, everyone. I'm out of town this weekend teaching an amazing writing retreat in Scotts Valley, California. I didn't want to let a weekend go by without an episode. We are revisiting the very first episode of the Hey Girl podcast with my dear friend, Ajalique Jude. I feel like rebroadcasting her story is important, not only because it's extremely moving, but also she just published her first book. It's called Becoming Enough. And it documents beautifully her journey through childhood, her journey through loss and grief, and how she settled into herself as a young woman. The poetry in this book is mind-blowing. So, I hope you enjoy revisiting Ajalique's story. My first guest on the podcast is Ajalique Jude. She lost her mom when she was six years old and has been able to navigate through love and loss and ultimately redemption. Her mother has left behind a wonderful legacy. Not many people can willingly sit and talk about how death has touched them and how death plays a major part in their lives from such a young age. This is Ajalique's story. Hey girl. Hey girl. How are you? Doing well. I'm really glad to have you here for my very first podcast episode. Very exciting and super random. So I am sitting down with a bunch of my girlfriends and just talking about their different stories. And I want to share them with people everywhere because I feel like we all have such a rainbow of experiences. I wanted to sit down specifically with you to talk about your life without a mom because you grew up without your mom starting at age six. So can you kind of give us up some background on on how that affected you and how you dealt with not growing up with your mom? My mom was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was about nine months and she fought through the different stages of breast cancer Mm -hmm. with chemotherapy and radiation. She had a double mastectomy, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And ultimately, the cancer spread to her organ, her Mm -hmm. other organs, Mm -hmm. and she passed when I was six. How did you find out your mom had passed away? Because I know your dad really tried to protect you and your brother as much as he could. And I know that that's super difficult, like building these boundaries to protect your young kids, but also letting them experience um, and feel and grieve. So how did how did daddy handle that? Because that's what I call him. <laughs> daddy Jude. Mm-hmm. Um, he was very protective, but still as much as you can with a six and eight year old. Right communicative as well about that our mother was sick Mm -hmm. that likely she would be transitioning Mm -hmm. and passing away Mm -hmm. so the weekend that they assumed or somewhat predicted that she would pass he had his mother take my brother and I so we weren't in the house um, when she did transition Mm -hmm. but it allowed my dad time to have with her with right yeah. just my mom and have those final moments and be there with her without i wouldn't say pressure but maybe but maybe a little a little pressure yeah. of having me and my brother there yeah i want to say the day after or 2 days later mm-hmm. when they had removed her body uh, my grandmother brought us back to the house mm-hmm. and there was lots of family members present and church members 
and I had this really bizarre memory of how this all went down <laughs> when we returned <laughs> home, and I and we were told that yeah. that had happened. Mm-hmm. My mom was gone. So let me stop you right there, real quick. So when you were told that your mom passed away, if you can remember, because this was so long ago, how did you? How did you wrap your mind around Like, did you wrap your mi- mind around it? Did your brother, because he was a little bit older than you, like, were you sad? Did you cry? Like, what were the, how do you even, like, wrap your mind around your parent being gone and being little, you know? Do you remember? It was really bizarre. Like, my memories of that entire time was very, it was just strange yeah. because I knew what was going on, but I don't think that I understood what death really was was right. and that it was truly permanent right I remember even at her funeral but once again I was sick so mm-hmm. this isn't about insensitivity <laughs> right. or lack of emotion right but I was in the church basement painting my nails with my cousins like yeah right and I don't know if that was to shelter me or to not really sit through the entire service mm-hmm. but I don't think I fully understood that mommy is not coming back right and I remember the only time I cried from finding out Mm -hmm. was when I saw her in the casket. Mm. So I remember the sensory things about that. I remember her skin had a grayish tone. Mm -hmm. I remember my dad had slathered her in frankincense and myrrh oil. (laughs) Like I can still, I can still smell smell it. it. And when I smell that now, I still think Think of of that. Wow. It was like really punch. <laughs> it was so strong <laughs> because Daddy just goes all out. Yes, and he does. We love him for it. That's yes, great. he does. Um, but that's so interesting because you and I have talked about this. Like my husband Ryan, who you know um, very well, his mom passed away last year, and after that, it just felt like life was so short. Like both of us can kind of feel our mortality now, and. I've talked to you about it before. Like, I just don't know. Like, I don't want to die. Like, I just, no thanks, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, like, I, that's what I've known since I've been little. So you kind of, you handle it way better than me. But I'm like, how do you handle that? Like, walking around knowing that you're going to be a mother someday or you're going to be a wife someday and that, and I think of that as a mother now and as a wife now. Like, I don't want to leave nobody behind. Like, I catch myself thinking, like, oh, I'm going to die. Who's going to die first, me or Ryan? You know, I oh hope we goodness. die together. I know, but that's just, it, it's as intense as that is. It's scary. It's scary to me. Mm-hmm. You losing your mom at such a young age and not really seeming scared of death, kind of like, well, this is what happens. I experienced it so young. It's really admirable for me because the older I get, the more I trip out about dying. <laughs> and I really like, when when we talk about it, I try to keep it light with him, but I'm like, I hope we die together like in the notebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's totally going to happen. So just how have you navigated life without your mom? Just going from being a young girl to a teenager, like getting your period. We've had that conversation and how lucky you were with that situation. I'm going to mm-hmm. let you tell it. And then like just college and first loves and things like that. Like how did you navigate life without your mom? It has been an interesting experience, yeah. to say the least. Yeah. Um, because what has been interesting or and hard for me or what shaped most of my childhood, mm-hmm. what hurt more or what left the like lasting impression right, right. wasn't necessarily that my mom died. It was what happened after mm-hmm. and all that it caused. Right. Okay. Because my dad was suddenly a single parent. Mm-hmm. And my mom, like a Sagittarius like me, was sweet, <laughs> kind, <laughs> loving, gentle, yes. all those things. Yeah. And my dad. <laughs> it's off the chain. It's a Gemini. Yeah. So we all know how Geminis are. A <laughs> um, little crazy. And he had anger issues. Mm-hmm. So they were really night and day. Yeah. And, and she was the balance. She was the balance. And so when that left, we were left with a man that was grieving, Mm -hmm. a man who wasn't nurturing, Mm -hmm. who grew up in an abusive home Mm -hmm. with alcoholic parents. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have the tools to even try and fill that void of losing our mother and losing that nurturing parent. So it became a struggle for both my brother and I to function Mm -hmm. 
with such a masculine presence in the house all the time who had anger issues, who was grieving, who was dealing with his own childhood just stuff. drama stuff mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. I'd say it was more difficult for my brother because he was older. Mm -hmm. He was more attached to my mom. Mm -hmm. Not a attached, but he was a mama's boy. Right. And I'm definitely a daddy's girl. Right. So for me, I wasn't missing in affection because I was most affectionate. With, with my dad, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like most little girls are. We cuddle with them and mm -hmm, all those things. Mm -hmm. But my brother no longer had that yeah. soft nurture, and I think he needed it more. Mm -hmm. And he may be somebody you want to have a conversation with um, in the podcast yeah. just because yeah. he's transitioned mm -hmm. and he's transgender. Mm -hmm. When we went through childhood therapy and all of that, right. that was touched on that my dad being so masculine yeah. and my brother being always more on the feminine, feminine side, yeah. it like pushed him towards trans being transgender. Mm -hmm. And he just, yeah, he just always had more of a feminine presence than even I did. Yeah, It's just been a, a lot to process mm -hmm. for most of my adulthood, yeah. trying to figure out kind of the holes that it placed yeah. within me yeah. and the different areas of my life that it made harder to navigate. Okay. So, like you said, we've touched on like the little things that you miss yeah. your mom for. Yeah. And I was lucky in the sense that like when I did get my first cycle. menstrual cycle, <laughs> I was thankfully with my grandmother once again. That, that's so, an angel. That like, is mama really angel was all the way. because I probably would have <laughs> freaked out. I did freak out, but it, at least I was with a woman. Right, so right. in those moments where you're supposed to have your mom, mm -hmm. that's when you feel empty right. for those sorts of things. Right. And I think less in my childhood and more so now, I feel the grief of not having my mom. Okay. So let's talk about that. You being, we're almost 30 now. Um, whoo, Lord. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we both took an inhale. <laughs> I know you're really super close with your dad, which is... That's been a process. That has been a process. Healing. That has been a process. But do you think your mom not being here has played a part in you guys becoming closer? Like, do you have conversations with your mom? I know Ryan, um, he talks to his mom. He prays to her. He says he said that since, since she's, she's dead now, he's like, I don't really pray to God. Like, I pray to my mom, you know, mm -hmm. and they have conversations and she comes to him in her, his dreams and all that. So I mm -hmm. just wonder, do you experience that? And how her not being here, how has that shaped you and your dad's relationship? Definitely have conversations with my mom. Yeah. Especially growing up, similar to Ryan, I would always pray to her. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as a child, especially in child therapy, and it was definitely Christian based yeah. <laughs> because we were in private school. They're like, oh, you know, your mom is with God now. Mm -hmm. So in my little child mind, I'm like, OK, well, I can just pray to my mom. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's sitting up there right. with him. So. <laughs> right. Right. And she probably loves me a little bit more. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me pray to her and see what she can do. Right. <laughs> but I definitely still talk with her regularly. Mm -hmm. Just trying to, to seek guidance in the areas that I still struggle right. to be feminine in certain ways, mm -hmm. feminine in a relationship, soft in a relationship, mm -hmm. because my most consistent relationship in my life period has been with my dad. Right. I'm right. not that close with my family. Another story, another day, another time. <laughs> But he's my close. He's always been my closest relationship. He's your everything, kind of. Pretty much. Yeah. Because obviously he's a man. Mm -hmm. He can't teach me, but so much about right functioning as a woman in a relationship and how to be soft because I didn't have those things modeled. Right. So sometimes I'll talk to her for guidance or just write out, similar to even how I have a prayer journal and I talk to God, I do talk to my mom yeah. and write out yeah. um, thoughts as well. Yeah. So that's helped. It's comforting in the sense that I feel I can try to connect still with her spirit. Mm -hmm. And 
oftentimes where I felt her presence the most is when I'll go and visit her gravesite. Mm-hmm. Like the her energy it's when like I come is still there. Yeah, yeah. And maybe not in obvious ways. Maybe I'll be asking her a question, and there's like a gust of wind out of nowhere, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's a confirmation to that question. Yeah. So now. In my adult life, my biggest fear is that I won't feel the full force of grief Mm -hmm. until I hit those milestones that you really want your mom there for. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of your wedding day (laughs) and the whole process leading up to that. Yeah. And when I have my first child, you know, those sorts of things where you really need your mom. Yeah. So would you say that? healing comes in waves for you even now at almost how old are we 28 27 28 as we grow and get older like do you feel like you you miss her more now definitely yeah grief is really a tricky thing because yeah. there is no manual plan guidebook for right. it you really don't know what's going to trigger that feeling of right. grief in any moment right So there are times just, even on your wedding day, seeing your mom and your grandma and Ryan's mom there and the tears and just the energy, that feminine energy that was there, that really hit me and made me emotional. Because I'm like, I'm not going to have that. That's just the reality of it. So that triggers the grief. Sometimes watching a movie Mm -hmm. about someone with breast cancer will trigger the grief. Mm -hmm. There's just so many points in your life where you're not expecting it, where it can hit. So it's a a constant, I think, healing process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And especially when it's someone so close to you as your mother, I don't think you ever fully... You feel cheated. Yeah. Like, I feel, I, yeah. that's how I feel. I feel cheated. Yeah. And I've always kind of carried that, like, this subtle yeah. jealousy for everyone that still has their mom. Yeah. Ryan feels that way now. Um, yeah. And you and I have, you, he and I have talked about this. Like, he, he has caught himself feeling really sad about not having his mom but then he'll say because you're the closest person to us that doesn't have their mom and he'll say but I know Ajo would have killed to have 30 years with her mom right so it's like that is always going to be that constant battle that push and pull because he'll even say like you know I'm, I'm jealous like when he sees other people with their mom sometimes even when he's with my family and he's like I wish my mom was around. Do you know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. it's just interesting to see how when one person transitions out of this life, how the people who are left in this life are continuously transitioning here and trying to figure out and wrap around and, and wrap their head around, like, how am I going to function through this? Um, and how do I stay grateful for what I had? It's tricky. And I've never lost anyone super close to me and that scares me and we've talked about that too I'm like I just know like I'm okay like I just want everybody to be with me (laughs) ever (laughs) because that's just all I know and I'm not ready to feel that type of loss so it's really admirable when I watching you just navigate through life watching my husband navigate through life and his siblings navigate through life without your mom like your backbone like that's Mm -hmm. who brought you into this earth you know what I mean that's It's really admirable. Hey, girls. I'm super happy that you've tuned into the podcast. Whether you're new here or a seasoned supporter, I want to stay connected. You can find me on the gram at Alex underscore L. And if you want something new to read, you can head over to AlexL.com to check out more of my work. In the meantime, make sure to subscribe, review if you love the potty, and share with a friend. I also want to touch on, like, what are some of your fondest mem- six-year-old's memories of your mom? <laughs> I know you've told me one about watching scary movies. Yes. She made it a point to spend a lot of time with us, mm-hmm. likely because she knew her time was limited. Right. And at that 
point where she was battling um, with like doing the chemotherapy, mm -hmm. she was bedridden often. Right, right. And my dad was working overnight shifts while he was away doing the overnight shifts. Yeah. We would be in the bed with her and she would do and kind of let us break all the rules. Yeah. So she <laughs> wasn't supposed to be eating meat because my dad totally believed in yes, holistic, holistic everything, living everything, and yeah. <laughs> she was not about that life. She loved Popeyes and Cinnabons and crab legs mm -hmm. and everything that I love. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know where it comes from. Uh, so she, yeah, she would sneak Popeyes in the house and we would be up. Eating Popeyes. Eating Popeyes, watching Tales um, from the Crypt and watching Stephen King's It, which oh children should not be watching. <laughs> but it, I've loved horror movies since then. I and know. for some reason, I was totally into it yeah. as a kid. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then her trying to cover for us, like when we heard his key in the door and like scurry back to our <laughs> bed. <laughs> like daddy's home. And oh. she was also very nurturing. Um, of our creativity mm -hmm. because she was a very creative person too. Mm -hmm. uh, she loved to paint. She loved to draw. Uh, she used to sew mm -hmm. and make all types of outfits. I think even I, trying to make African outfits, I which think is I so funny. You telling me. Didn't she make you guys his uniforms or something? Did you tell me that? Not our uniforms, but a lot, a lot of, of stuff. Right. She made us little. Liberian uh, moo moos and things. It <laughs> was really cute. cute, and she had some for herself. Like That's we had awesome. matching that is so little cute. outfits. It was really cute. Sometimes even when I do those things, I feel connected to her. Mm -hmm. Like when I've attempted to sew my own clothes. <laughs> um, I remember that, and it actually came out really cute. Your skirt. It did, but my fingers were. <laughs> On fire. On fire for like a week. <laughs> so I won't ever do that again. But that made me feel connected to her. Any creative expression does mm -hmm. because she, that's what she loved to do. We would always paint, draw, although I wasn't skilled in that area. Before we wrap up, I do want to touch on how not having your mom here has kind of been your guiding force as a woman as far as being the best woman you can be. Because I truly admire you. I think you're wonderful. And thank you. It's such a joy being your friend and your sister. Like, you're just awesome. So, how do you keep her legacy alive, or how do you try to keep her legacy alive just by being, you know, and being present and in your relationship and your friendships, work life? Like, how do you, how do you do that? Similar to what Ryan mentioned about how he has all of these memories, right? Mm -hmm. 30 years with his mom mm -hmm. that he now feels saddened because he doesn't have her presence, right. having experienced all of her loveliness. Right. I didn't have that same experience. Right. I have certain memories, but they're not like full, yeah. vibrant right. memories. Right, right. So a lot of... My knowledge of my mom mm -hmm. and the type of woman she was comes from other people. Mm -hmm. How they interacted with her, mm -hmm. how she impacted them. Mm -hmm. And one thing that always stood out is nobody ever had anything bad to say about my mom. Mm -hmm. Like they said she was the sweetest person. Mm -hmm. She was kind of shy and quiet like me. Mm -hmm. um, and we have very similar mannerisms. So that's always nice to hear when someone says that because yeah. then I feel like I really am you a part her. of this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That always stuck with me because there aren't, I mean, there are people, but there aren't that many people when they pass that nobody, you know, people still, right. you know, they were a little like this. Yeah. You know, but yeah, they always had good things to say about her. Yeah. So when I think of what a woman's supposed to be, that really is my idea, right? Mm, mm. So to be kind, to show up for people in your life, mm -hmm. to love unconditionally, mm -hmm. because that's the one thing like my dad always stressed and that was the source of all of his grief. He feels like she's the only woman in like his whole entire existence yeah. that ever loved him unconditionally. Mm -hmm. He was just saying this again two days ago. <laughs> so like, but that's how, that was her impact. Imagine you think like he's still, he's in love still with her? oh absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He still can remember that so strongly. Yeah. And that she loved 
and conducted herself in a way that it still touches people. Yeah. And there was one of my exes who was Liberian too. And Liberians, like, it's always an ongoing joke, like everyone's your cousin. <laughs> and he was having a family function. Mm -hmm. And one of my family members was there. <laughs> and we had this, like, really freak out moment. Like, um, hopefully we're not related. Yeah. That would be awkward. Yeah. But it was a distant cousin that was there. But I had only probably met her two or three times before. Mm -hmm. She probably hadn't seen me since I was maybe eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And she brought up my mom. Wow. And how much she missed her. And she started crying in the middle of this cookout. Oh, just off, you know, so yeah. I have these moments of, her. of just her. Yeah. And, yeah. and getting glimpses of just how awesome she was yeah. and how loving she must have been. Yeah. So that really is always the center of who I want to be mm -hmm. and how I want to be remembered yeah. and the type of mother I want to be, the type of wife that I'd like to be one day. Mm -hmm. It definitely shapes how I act and how I treat the people around me. Mm -hmm. She was amazing. <laughs> I hope that I can be a fraction of her, to be honest. Yeah. So that's yeah. wonderful. Well, thank you, sis, for being here. Oh, I definitely want people to know where they can find you and your writing and social media and all that. So feel free to share. You can find me on Instagram. It's just my first name. It's She's the Ajolique. only Ajolique in the world. <laughs> it's A J O L I Q U E. Yep. And that's the same for Twitter, right? Yes. Just for everything. You know, nobody has my name. It's a blessing. <laughs> yes, that is. Blessing. <laughs> all right, girl. Thank you. Thank you. The Hey Girl podcast is a member of the District Productive, produced by Paul, Woody Woodhall, and me. Alex L. Music by DC's own Kokai. <laughs>